So for today's deck spotlight, we are going to take a look at a mid-range version of Warrior that I've been playing that I call Disruption Warrior. Now, I know that Trader Joe, who is a fantastic player and wonderful member of the community, has been uh, sharing a list that he was calling like Mid-Grow Warrior. It's like half aggro, half mid-range, and his is a fantastic list. Mine is a little bit slower, and it's designed specifically to just pummel control decks. I've been running into a lot of support mage on the ladder and I said uh, I've had it. I want a list that is just meant to punish control and ultimately this is what I came up with and it was working uh, very very well for me. So taking a look at what we got. Uh, first off we have a lot of two drops. Getting early board presence is important. It's important with any mid-range deck but it's even more so important with warrior because we don't have a lot of comeback tools. Sorcerer's picked up a couple recently with Pharaoh Stalker, Worm King's Agent, and a few other things that can kind of help them pick off targets and throw up some guards. Um, Agility-based decks have Murkwater Shaman, Sheer Point Dragon, Leaf Lurker to kind of catch you up a little bit. Uh, Assassin's got things like Queen Baron Zia for some drain. Again, the agility decks have access to Brynjolf. Warrior really doesn't have those tools so if you fall behind you're really hurting so lots of two drops um circle initiate dragon tail savior orc clan captain wind keep spell sword protector of the innocent 15 two drops might seem like a lot but again it's very very important that you hit the ground running with a deck like this now the three slot is some pretty familiar cards we've got young mammoth we've got galen but one of the cards that really makes this deck tick is Withered Hand Cultist. This card is fantastic against control decks, fantastic against those agility based decks that use curses and completed contracts because it really slows them up as well. It's also one of the reasons that I call this Disruption Warrior. So looking at the rest of the list you may notice that we also run Garnag and we also run Wrath of Sithis. So Wrath of Sithis increases the cost of cards for a turn. Withered Hand Cultus increases the cost of actions. Garanag reduces Magicka. These three cards are the core of why I call this list Disruption Warrior, because you're trying to disrupt your opponent's ability to answer your threats. And again, against control decks, specifically these three cards can cause a lot of problems. So I've been having a lot of fun playing this against control decks. It's been very, very successful. The rest of the list is pretty standard fare. Um, Shadowfen Priest is there for some utility, and then the rest of your like five drops are really meant to be reach. So we've got things like Sower of Revenge, Fantastic Body, The Last Gasp gets some extra damage in. Underworld Vigilante is again, charge creature, gives you some utility if you need to get rid of something in the shadow lane. A lot of times this thing is just going face and that's entirely fine. At that point in the game, you're kind of looking to finish your opponent off, and that's it. Um, wish wish that there was uh, some cool combos to talk about, some cool interactions, but there's really not with this deck. It's get on the board, play the cards that slow down your opponent's ability to answer the things you have on the board, and then use your reach to finish the game out. So, like always, I'm going to go ahead and include some games to show you some examples of the deck in action. So I've got a couple of games following this. Thanks for watching, and as always, may you walk on warm sands. All right, we are going first against Archer. Curious to see what kind. Uh, when you are going first, uh, this is not the hand you want to see. That looks a whole lot better. start field lane. There is the risk of this being charged into. I've seen a couple of like control archers running bats Just and things. Give me a name. Watches over Come me. At me. Let's go ahead and get the withered hand down. It's 
Nothing personal. There's not much we can do about them getting the value trade, but hopefully this will kind of slow up their party a bit. Second Withered Hand should do the same. Wow, they really wanted that rapid shot. I assume it's because they want to make this trade here. Oh. As much as I want to develop this. Alright, so the reason we're going to take that line is because with them having the ring, uh, they open themselves up to Leaf Lurker on our guy. Um, if I go field lane, Cliff Racer could kill my guy. And if I leave it, he's going to get a second contract. And all of those are kind of feels bad. So we're going to take the trade, develop this here. Um, unless he has something we absolutely have to take out with the Vigilante, we'll uh, develop our two and our three. Fall, Hopefully go ahead and, and trigger this. Baby. Interesting that went there. I can only assume that that means that they wanted to Archer's Gambit, but they did not have the Magicka. So, ready to join a dark we're going to go ahead and do that. Ah! And play a second one, and now if they have a Gambit, uh, they'll have to spend all six Magicka to do it. Which is, I mean, still a, a two for one. Well, two for two, because they have to lose the Fighter's Guild recruit as well, but still slows them down quite a bit. And they do it! They spend six magic. They really wanted to get rid of my Withered Hands. But that's kind of what this deck does, right? Like, that's entirely the point. Let's go ahead and play Wrath of Synthesis. Further disrupt them. This one isn't aggr as aggressive as other mid-range warrior decks floating around right now, but I really like the hand disruption potential. Interesting. Do they have another gambit here? They would have to ring to use it, because it'd be plus one. Just don't know why you would... Choose the 4 3 to lock down there. Unless you've got uh, something you want me to go into. Interesting. Maybe that's going to be Leaf Lurker next turn? We start tonight. Trying to decide if I want to just Vigilante face there for five more. Or I just want to eat this, knowing that this is just going to eat a Leaf Lurker. I There's think we actually no just eat this. Because if he plays the Leaf Lurker, he only have three Magicka left with the Ring, four if you count the contract they have. So... <laughs> another pet, which is problematic. I have to assume this is a Leaf Lurker now, right? No. Fair enough. Doing a good job of slowing us down, despite all of the disruption we're throwing their way. What have we here? Use their last ring charge, but they still have a contract. Oh, that's a really good top deck for us. Come at me! You must be cleansed. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now they can obviously still trade with our 5-3, but now they have to use both creatures or do something else. Uh, taking the lethal creature off. Now I know we have the captain here, and in theory we probably should have stacked to make this a little bit better, but with them getting up to 8, we have to now start thinking about unstoppable rage plays going forward. 
So having a little bit of a split presence so that it doesn't cripple us as much should be helpful. Yeah. For example, that's relatively problematic. If I fall, the hist will reclaim me. What have we here? You can still force a lot of damage, but this can set up some pretty nifty Shadow Shift Rage plays. Oh, no, it cannot. Thank you, sir. May I have it? Come at me! Mother of mine! Protect the night mother. Garnag top deck is really, really crucial. Now, they do have the contract. They've not yet used that. But a rage here, at the moment, doesn't clear it. Gains them some health. But doesn't do anything else. Oh, they just plain had a discounted rage. What? What a lucky top deck. I still don't think that's enough to save them, though. Because we've got My 17 on the board. Big shadow. So unless they have, like, contract rapid shot to kill something. The Night Mother will guide us. That should be it. And we, we found a little bit of extra reach anyway. No one gets through. Mother of mine. So the rage was not enough. Garnag coming in strong. A lot of disruption in that game, but that's what this deck is supposed to do. Alright, so we are going first against Mage. Easily my least favorite class to play against, just in general. Hey! Three of a kind, I win a prize. Alright, so at least we found a two drop. Garnag looks good. Finding, <laughs> finding the Ale is a little disappointing. Apparently they just really wanted us to have Ale this game. Ooh. So this, we'll see this hand is not looking good for this back. matchup. Uh, we're a little bit behind the eight ball. By the eight, they will meet their maker. Yeah. If we don't find a three drop here, that's meaningful, and we did not. As long as I draw um, well. That might just be a game, as sad as that sounds. Like we can develop Reeve into Sower, which are some pretty powerful plays. Shame on table. But We have to assume at this point because of their lack of like playing things that this is control mage and we're just we're just giving them free turns. Like we're not we're not pressuring them and that is a problem. Doesn't matter how good the rest of our hand is. Um, we kinda just have to assume Do you not fear me, mortal? that they're just gonna have You're answers. Short. No. The question is what kind of By control eight, mage is this? Is it a rest mage? Is it a support mage? Just standard control? Oh, that sower is also nice, but... I am ready we want to get our triggers to join me on the hunt. You will perish in no. First room prophecy, not good for us. Alright. Kind of curious about bolting that. Kind of telegraphs that there's no ice storm. Because if there was an ice storm, you would have bolted this. This could have done uh, two to it, and then you could have wiped the board there. Alright, so now we know it is, in fact, support. Mage. By all the powers of the eight. Shale take you. Um, we've 
actually got some pretty good turns here. We stand united. The longer the odds, the worse is over. Do this for now. The Garnag might end up being a pretty big deal, but we got a lot of power plays. That one just saturates really well and potentially forces them into a pickle. Uh, the Withered Hand Cultist means they cannot Dawn's Wrath, they cannot Ice Storm, which is why we, we took that path. Uh, without additional actions, which we have to assume they have, right? But without uh, Firebolts or things like that, they even can't pull off the... Uh, five, four. Oh, they got it. There you go. They're gonna use the tongue. So this means we can still push a pretty fair amount of damage this turn. Potentially lethal. Uh, we've got 9, 11, 12, 13, plus the uh, Sower Sacrifice, actually. So... Too late for you. A dark omen for you. No wait. Yeah, that's why we waited. Um, a couple of different ways that we could go here. Still feel like Garnag ends up being potentially the correct play. But Bone Colossus is also looking really spicy. They have this trade here, though. Do you not fear me, mortal? Close rank, you what should not this? Still can't Dawn's Wrath because of the Withered Hand Cultist. Two guards in front helps with the protection. Uh, actions to get rid of the guards will cost more. Uh, an Ice Storm will still not clear Withered Hand Cultist as well. I think that's probably our best course of action. Because again, our, our kind of goal is to disrupt their play. So protecting the guy that disrupts, putting a little bit of reach on the board. Um, You know, they can go to 9, if they played a Cauldron Keeper, they could even go up to 11, but we got more than enough to kind of cover that, given the board state. Stand up, protect me. Oh, shit. Uh. So, down to 2. Can go as high as four. Maybe more. They could play some more healing here. Currently, uh, currently this still threatens lethal. All right, so that's, that's how they're gonna go about it. A dark omen for you. So at this point, you. still can't push the uh, lethal, but we, we can. We can Garnag and then leave our Withered Hand Cultist there. So, again, preventing the Dawn's Wrath. Um, I sell cures for all ills. Getting a lot of uh, lethal threatening in there. Victory is yours. There we go. Got enough reach and enough disruption to get the job done.